the Wild West. Its painted deserts and vast canyons are the perfect backdrops for the legends of courageous gunfighters who walk the iconic streets of Tombstone. But it wasn't these quick-drawing cowboys who would have the biggest influence on the rest of the young nation. No, the West was one with minerals. Arizona produces a variety of highly collectible mineral specimens. But copper is the hero of Arizona's mineral wealth and ultimately would turn this territory into a state. A state where still today you can find yourself sitting right in the middle of history. I'm Thomas Nagin and I'm a mineral explorer. I'm the guy that supplies museums, galleries, and private collectors with world-class pieces of nature's art. Come along with us as we travel the globe in search of rare gems, crystals, and other fine minerals. It's not always easy, but it's always an adventure. This is Copper Country. Arizona leads the nation in the production of this highly sought mineral commodity. But for mineral enthusiasts, the state holds many treasures and is home to the world's biggest mineral show. I've been coming here for almost 40 years, <laughs> a really long time, and I've made a lot of friends here at the Tucson show because there's so much to be offered here, and it's so interesting. People from all over the world, minerals from all over the world, just about anything you can imagine. Here's a little overview of some of the shows that are happening here in Tucson. There's the Westward Look, there's the Tucson Convention Center, there's here, the Tucson City Center, and there's probably 40 other shows that are happening at one time or another during the month. The participating vendors come from all around the world to display their wares, moving thousands of tons of merchandise by air, land, and sea. It's no small task getting ready for Tucson. First, the minerals have to be sourced. Then they're shipped back home where they're processed, priced, and packaged for transit. Fortunately, I have some great help. Tim's been working with me for over 20 years. He's in charge of receiving and processing the minerals at our warehouse. Well, we're getting ready for the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show, and it usually takes us about five months to get ready for that show. You know, we take about 22,000 pounds of minerals to Tucson with us. When the minerals arrive, they're often dirty and dull. But by the time Tim is done with them, their hidden beauty shines. Well, we're going to go through the cleaning process of the amethyst, which uh, requires putting the amethyst through hydrochloric acid, and we leave it in approximately 24 hours. After that, it goes into a neutral bath of baking soda and water. And after a night in neutral, then they'll be pulled out and put into oxalic acid, which takes the iron out. And once they come out of that, after a boiling temperature, they'll go downstairs and be put on the table to be priced. The work we do here is meant to enhance the specimen, not alter it. And Tim is an expert at making sure each piece looks its very best. On occasion, we get pieces in that are too large for the saws that we have here. And sometimes they have a little too much damage or they need to be cut to stand up proper. We set it up on a pallet such as this, put a couple of straps on it so it doesn't move. And then we take our saw, which we have a diamond chainsaw, and we use to cut the mineral. It's water fed, gas operated. The water comes out of the bar in between the teeth on the chain. The teeth on the chain are all diamond coated so we can cut through quartz or dolomite or just about anything else we want to cut through. Come January, this southwest city turns into a playground for mineral enthusiasts. At its center is the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, 
the flagship event. Well, this Gym and Mineral Show is Tucson's premier event. 4,500 exhibitors, over 314,000 people who come to the show. It's in a community of a million people. The majority of them from out of town. It's just something that really features our community. Because I think one of the great attractions to the show is you can go from show to show and get every different kind of experience. We like to say you can buy things here from $5 to $500,000. The main show is a nonprofit hobby organization that started this whole big thing 62 years ago. Their focus is on the public and educational outreach, and they concentrate mainly on minerals, geology, and earth sciences. The people that are involved with the organization are serious mineral enthusiasts, and they want to share their passion with people all over the world. They basically create the world's biggest and best mineral museum. It exists for only four days and then it disappears, never to be seen in that format again. They have competitions for the best cases and people compete and they give awards. It's really kind of interesting to see which are the best cases. Every year there's a different theme. The world's top museums bring fantastic displays on that theme. There's so much to explore and see here, it's no wonder that it's the world's premier event for minerals. I teach sixth grade science, right. and uh, one of the things about minerals is, is that young people can make a difference in the science. Okay, my dad found that species when he was 17. I found this conolite, which is a fairly real species, when I was also 17 uh, with my twin brother. This is a collection of Bisbee minerals. Uh, the oldest one here rates, dates from probably about 1883, 1884, and some of them came out as late as about 1986. The focus is mainly azurite, which is uh, a common copper ore, bright blue. It gives a general good representation of uh, blue minerals from Bisbee. I moved to Arizona in 59. The show had already been in, in place four years. My first visit here was 1960. So in 55, they did a show. They held it in the Helen Keeling Elementary School cafeteria. But Tucson was already a setting ready for it because the old movie studios over on the other side of the mountains at Old Tucson, and the, all of the cowboy movies that were shot in the desert were shot outside of Tucson, and so the actors and the crews all stayed here in Tucson. So the city really had the facilities for expansion. Uh, the year that I had my fiber artery bypass operation was January 2nd, and I was here the next month. <laughs> so a staunch I, advocate. I don't know if that's dedication or stupidity. <laughs> For folks in the mineral trade, this event is a family reunion of sorts. Bob's been a regular here at the show well before I started over 40 years ago. This is Mineral Mecca. Really is Mineral Mecca. This is the Harvard display. The theme of the show is blue minerals. So we've got compositions in blue. And, I mean, you've got a fabulous topaz with a cut stone there. Very, very, very That's fine. That's huge. Personal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the piece that impresses me, surprisingly, is not all of this. It's that piece of Labradorite. That's, yeah, that's ordinary feldspar. Is that lovely? Yeah, yeah it's Labradorite. A great piece. Yeah, and that, that really is a great piece. But, you know, the beauty of Harvard is it's it's historical experience. It's you know it's, they've been doing stuff on minerals for 150 years. It's really quite a remarkable place. Anyway, that's that's the Harvard case. One thing that sets this show apart is the number of quality exhibits from nonprofit institutions. Well, the, the theme for the show is blue. All right. This was put in by the Gemological Institute of America over in California. Look at the size of this topaz. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. That, that's outrageous. I, I hear they just won the uh, award for the best case. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should. right. Yeah. This is marvelous. You know, look at the lapis beads here. 
the little instruments carved out yeah. of wrappers. Yeah, right. yeah and, the, and the variety of faceted stones that oh, are all yeah, blue. Look at that, look at yeah, that. Right, yeah, yeah, I think that's each one labeled. It's cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite on Fredo. Arizona's own minerals are the result of the state's unique geology, but their discovery was largely due to a long hunt for copper. Imagine their surprise when the miners stumbled across these beautiful and strange formations. Uh, I was born and raised in Arizona. My father was a mineral collector and he got me started collecting minerals. I decided to focus on minerals from Arizona because of the rich mineral heritage that Arizona mines have produced. There's a rich variety of different mineral species that are, that are found here, in, in mostly in southern Arizona. You know, really, it, Arizona was a territory for a long time until 1912, and the reason Arizona became a state was due to its mineral wealth. The Arizona Territory, you know, these large copper deposits were discovered in the late 1800s, Bisbee being one of those. At that time, Arizona was just a territory, not a state. These copper deposits were discovered right at the same time that electricity was coming online as, you know, to run, the whole country started running on electricity. So this copper was in demand for wiring and so on. And uh, Arizona kind of had to prove to the, the bureaucrats in Washington that, that it was worthy of becoming a state. Well, everything in this case is from the state of Arizona, uh, but several of these pieces are from the uh, copper deposits of Bisbee, Arizona. This large blue specimen in the center is azurite. This was one of the uh, important copper ores in the early period of the mining at Bisbee. This particular specimen was collected in the early 1890s. You probably noticed these, these orange and yellow crystals. That's the mineral wolfenite. Wolfenite is a very popular mineral due to its beauty. Uh, and actually right now, we're working to get wolfenite established as the official state mineral of the state of Arizona. Here's a specimen of uh, these long crystals here of, of uh, metallic copper. Um, that's from Bisbee, Arizona also. Um, these are unusual crystals because the crystals are actually twinned. And twinning happens when you get uh, 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 two crystals that form in a mirror image. Uh, there are only so many of these things. They're very beautiful, they're very unique, and they need to be preserved for future generations. It's easy to get captivated at one show, but there's so much to see in Tucson with satellite shows all over town, many that cater to a specific shopper. So the Westward Look is really just a satellite show of the whole big event that's Tucson. It's not a big show. We have maybe 40 dealers and a few blocks of hotel rooms here. You can walk around it in a few hours. But in terms of concentration of goodness, it's like walking through a museum. There's more good fine mineral specimens here in, in this hotel than anywhere else in the world at any time, including most major museums. So I'm Rob Levinsky. I've actually come to Tucson for 26 years now since I was a freshman in college. And at some point about 10, 11 years ago, a number of us got together and started thinking, wouldn't it be nice to show minerals more exclusively at a nicer venue if we just pull it back a little bit, have a little more privacy and space. We're out here at this beautiful natural preserve. And it's just a nicer environment to show these beautiful things. So we moved up here and created the Westward Look Show. The Westward Look has a style. The style is elite, very fine collectible specimens.
The Arizona Mineral and Fossil Show has been running since 1989. We have about 250 vendors in the rooms. We have another 100 vendors in the tents and in the ballrooms and in the lobby. And this has become basically the social center of the mineral collecting and mineral buying and selling of the Tucson show. We try to cater to the wholesale trade. We're looking for shop owners, we're looking for collectors, we're looking for curators, we're looking for people that buy for resale. This is the place to get the best prices. There are dealers that literally come to this show during the opening days of the show and then a week later they set up at other shows around the uh, Tucson and double their money. Just bam, just like that. Each year, this show takes over entire hotels. The beds are moved out of many of the rooms and minerals moved in. I've been displaying here for over 20 years and it's always a pleasure to return. Well, this, this piece here is uh, pyrite and quartz. This comes from uh, Mundo Nuevo in, in northern Peru which is at about 15,000 feet. It's really high in altitude. <laughs> Gasping for air <laughs> up there. Yeah, it's a really sweet one. The vendors here really know their trade. For many, it's a passion, an out of control hobby that eventually became a career. And I am from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, and I came to Tucson in 86, uh, in the past century, of course, a so long, long time ago. But uh, I started to do deals with the minerals when I had 14. I have 58 right now, so it means 44 years doing business, which is a long trip. Uh, my favorite mineral could be the fluorite. I know it's a common mineral, sorry for that. But, uh, presentation, many shapes, many shadows, many colors, many forms, many different matrix. It's frequent in many different places, so probably is the fluorite. This is a fluorapatite. This is one specimen more showy than the other ones. You can see the color, it's more intense. You can see the zoning. What it means? It means that the crystal was growing with a deeper color in the beginning. You can see the deeper line inside, and you can see the clearer color on the top of the crystal and uh, that makes uh, very attractive to the collectors. All minerals tell a story. Some tell the story of ancient life on planet Earth. Here we see the, the very famous Archaeopteryx. There are only existing about 12 specimens of this uh, coming from one location in Germany. And it's, very, it's a very important fossil because it's a, a missing link. It means um, from the theory of evolution. And um, so the Archaeopteryx shows uh, teeth and feathers. So it means it's between dinosaurs and birds. And that's why it's so important. And there are only actually 12 specimens existing. So what we did is only showing this specimen, um, the people cannot really see by, I mean, the first idea what it was. It was a bird. A bird with teeth. So um, to show it to the kids, to the families, to the parents, to all the visitors, uh, they have now an imagination of what Archaeopteryx is. During the Tucson show, you can find minerals everywhere, sometimes even before you get in the showroom doors. So how many pieces do you have in your lot? There's uh, 56 pieces altogether. I believe that it started growing here, uh -huh. and then it's, it's separated. Separated. Yeah, okay. right. Uh -huh. It's like rabbit ears. <laughs> but this one is quite an impressive sight. That's real impressive because it's so much larger. These are twin crystals. So there's about 15 of these yeah. big crystals there. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a nice one, yeah. I like this piece. So what does this piece weigh about? 60 pounds. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's really, they're really, this is a pretty piece. I like this one. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. From its world-renowned trade show to its own mineral wealth, Arizona has a lot to offer the mineral enthusiast. And perhaps no one knows better than native son, Les Presmick, a longtime mining engineer, mineral expert, and the proud owner of one of the best private collections of Arizona minerals. We joke about the fact that, that, that there are, there has to be a collector gene, you know, and because some people collect whatever it is, and a lot of people do not. My father was not a collector. He never understood why I didn't take every mineral specimen and turn it into money and go buy land or something else. Not bad advice, but nowhere near as, as pretty as being able to enjoy the minerals. And it, it's about the beauty of the mineral specimens. It's about the science. It's about the history. Les Presmick, born and raised in Arizona. I've been collecting minerals now 53 years, almost 54 years since I was 10 years old. Everything that you'll see today is just from Arizona. Arizona is known as the copper state. Once copper was discovered, copper has lasted and been a economic mainstay in this state to today and will be for a number of decades into the future. Some of the, the major copper mines are well represented here. Everything on that shelf is from Renzi. In the case of azurite and malachite, azurite is the blue, malachite is the green. This lower shelf, um, or lower two shelves, are all Bisbee specimens ranging from having been collected about 1885 to as recently as 1990 or so. One of the other minerals that Arizona is world famous for is its wolfenite and probably the most famous locality in Arizona and one of the most famous in the world for wolfenite is the Red Cloud Mine. The copper in the middle is one of our best specimens. I believe, based on others, that it's one of the best, if not the best, native copper specimens from Bisbee. Not all specimens can go out on display in cabinets as much as I would like to. But the second best thing is to be able to have drawers available. At least I can pull them out one drawer at a time and, and look at the minerals and uh, enjoy their beauty. Or remember the story about who I was collecting with or who I got it from or the collection. Any number of things. Every specimen has a story. The minerals we prize today have a history that began long before us. Collectors, essentially, are caretakers, preserving nature's art for generations to come. So here we are at the University of Arizona's Mineral Museum. It's a hidden treasure in Tucson. Everybody who comes to this show should see it, but not everybody knows it's here. Hopefully that's changing. And one of the great things about being in a place like this is it ties in for you where this stuff ends up. We see these come out of the ground in the episodes of the series. We go all over the world to see these things collected and found. And a lot of them go to private collectors. But eventually, 50 years later, 100 years later, it ends up in a museum like this. And to see them in this context really shows you how valuable and important these kinds of things are. My name is uh, Bob Downs. I'm a professor of mineralogy here at the University of Arizona. Uh, I study uh, maybe high pressure minerals, the minerals that make up the interior of the Earth. More recently, I'm a co-investigator in the Mars Rover project, and we're driving the uh, Curiosity around in Gale Crater, and we, uh, we're identifying the minerals of Mars. So my whole Mars Rover involvement is because I built a database analyzing the minerals that are in this mineral museum and creating technologies for identifying them remotely. The University of Arizona Mineral Museum uh, has such a collection of rare minerals that we've analyzed and determined ways to identify things very quickly. So one of the components when the mineral show comes in is a stream of people coming through the museum, through the labs, with unknown materials that they've gathered over the last year or so, and saying, can you help us identify what these materials are? 
Now they provide a history. For instance, the Bisbee exhibit that you've been seeing, we have pieces from the World's Fair in uh, 1900 in Paris. Because it's been warm and there's been no glaciers coming through Arizona, all that top rock has not been pushed aside like it has in most of the rest of the country. And that leaves all these areas where the crystals grow. So Arizona is just very good for certain types of crystals. Arizona is a geological wonderland with a rich history largely shaped by its mineral wealth. The discoveries, innovations, and events that have followed have kept it at the center of the unique and exciting world of minerals. You're going to love it. <laughs> If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.